All right, our first caller is Christine from Idaho. Hey, Christine, how can we help you? Hey, guys, uh, thank you so much for taking my call. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so I'm 30 years old, and I work full-time as a paramedic and also part-time as a reserve firefighter. My goal is to work full-time for a local fire department, uh, but I'm really concerned that my strength is not where it needs to be to be successful. Uh, I'm I'm five foot six and about 145 pounds. When I use the in-body scale at my local gym, it puts me at about 27% body fat. While I think my upper body strength is adequate, I really struggle with my lower body strength. And I think a lot of this has to do with the past injury. Uh, 10 years ago, I was hit by a car. The car's bumper hit the back of my leg, just below my knee, and it tore my calf open. Uh, After the initial surgery, they weren't sure if they were going to have to amputate the leg, but thankfully I was able to keep the leg. But I have some pretty severe deficits from that injury. Uh, My ankle mobility is extremely limited. I have posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, a collapsed arch, and some pretty significant nerve damage. I can't push off with my toes or pull my foot inward. Uh, I wear an orthotic in my shoe to help with the arch support, but otherwise there's not much else that can be done to help with the nerve damage or the shortened Achilles. I do see a physical therapist regularly for my leg, and he's working with me to try to increase my mobility and my strength with my ankle and my foot. Um, I've been trying for this job for uh, upwards of five years now. I've made some pretty good accomplishments physically considering my injury. Uh, I passed the mile and a half run that you have to do in 11 minutes and 30 seconds. I've done the pack test, which is the wildland test, which includes a 45 pound weight vest and a three mile hike. I've done the CPAT, which is the national test for entry level firefighter. And I also participated in a fire academy this past year and earned my firefighter one certification. Uh, The problem is I feel like I've nearly had to kill myself to uh, do these things. I don't give up easily on my goals, but I feel really pushed to the limit physically to achieve these things. Every time I go on shift at the local fire department here, I just feel really apprehensive. I won't be able to perform adequately during a structure fire call. Um, As I said, I've been trying for this goal for several years, but I just feel like I've really reached a ceiling on my physical strength and ability. I tracked my calories and I'm eating about 3000 calories a day with uh, 280 grams of that being protein. I do full body workouts three to four times a week with phased rep ranges, progressive overload and deload weeks. Uh, I commute on my bike and usually total anywhere from three and at the most 10 miles a day. Uh, Of course, my sleep is affected by my professions. I work uh, 24 hour shifts, usually two to four 24 hour shifts a week. Uh, So the sleep is is a little more challenging for me for, for that reason. Um, I I just feel like I'm constantly pushing myself to be better physically, and I'm just not seeing the results. Mm. Uh, It's really frustrating to see other girls, uh, even locally in these local departments, that uh, seem to perform a lot better than me and are a lot stronger than me, and I just am not quite sure what I'm missing here. I I even follow, you know, athletes on Instagram that have are, have one leg amputated and wear a prosthetic and they're able to squat with one leg more than I can squat with two. Uh, so I understand this is a really loaded question with the added complexity of the past injury, but I was just hoping with the information I provided, you might be able to advise me on my nutrition or workouts or possible exercise variations to just help me progress and achieve my goals. Yeah, no. Th- wow. Yeah. Wow. A lot of stuff. That's a lot right there. Yeah. So we need a little more backstory. <laughs> no, please. So uh, I got to figure this out. First of all, you're a badass and I appreciate yeah. what you do. Um, that's great. So uh, real quick, I want a little clarification. You're eating 280 grams of protein a day. Did you say that? Yeah, I eat a ton of meat. I eat pro. I eat uh you know, grass-fed beef, chicken, eggs. Um, okay. Why so much? Yeah, that's that's why that's, so much. That's ex- that's excessive amount. That's uh, excessive for me. Yeah. Why 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 so much? So yeah, yeah. Answer that. I guess it's just kind of the way my eating habits have developed. Uh, I eat a, a ton of fruit and vegetables, and then for my fats, mostly like nuts. I don't eat a ton of like uh, processed grains. So I guess to just kind of try to keep my calories high, it ends up being more protein, but I can try to adjust that if you think. Yeah. I, I, so a couple things I'm going to recommend. Um, one, and this one's iffy, but I think you'll probably respond better uh, doing it this way. I would cut your protein down. Uh, it's way too much protein. Not that it's necessarily bad, but you're probably noticing reductions in performance 
because a good chunk of that protein is just getting turned into glycogen. So mm -hmm. you're not utilizing all those amino acids. It's not it's just way too much for someone your not size. Not to mention the amount of time it takes for that to convert over into that, and it, then and then you're doing stuff that's probably glycolytic. Yeah, Gly lots of glycolytic stuff. So I would take that protein. I'd bring it down to. 160 grams at the most, and then I would take the rest of it and eat it, eat some complex carbohydrates, easily digestible. It could be white rice, it could be sweet potato, things that you find that are easily digestible. That should improve structure around your workouts, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that should improve your performance. And then here's a second, and this one's very obvious for me point um, you're overdoing everything. Okay, uh, you're definitely. Uh, probably a high achiever. Uh, you're doing a lot of exercise, a lot of writing. I keep hearing you saying that you're you you, it, you can't push yourself past this point, and there's nothing I can do. It sounds like well, you're hitting. You feel like you're killing yourself going through all this. Yeah, too. you're you're. I've trained people like you, and, and then in addition to that, you allude to not getting the best sleep either. So yeah, yeah. I, I would take your workouts. I would cut them down. D do resistance training twice a week, so not three or four, two days a week. Focus on building strength. Don't go to failure. Practice the movements that you can do appropriately. So I'm, with your particular injury, if you can squat, then I would squat. If that doesn't work, do split stance style exercises. Mm -hmm. Continue working with a physical therapist and improve your mobility, but cut that stuff down. You're doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, way too much stuff, and your body is just not yeah. able to recover from all What that. have you been able to do uh, exercise-wise for your legs? Um, well, it's, it's just very challenging. So, uh, you know, a few months ago, I was able to be doing squats and cleans, uh, deadlifts. Recently, Please. I've had like a hip thing flare up, you know, it, it, again, talking about, you know, pushing yourself, I, it feels like every time I start to like creep up on, on my max lifts, uh, for my lower body, I always end up getting some sort of injury that sets me back again. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, a couple of things. If you were able to do those, so I would also, um, I would follow MAPS Anabolic, follow it to a T, uh, two day a week routine, like Sal is saying. I would do uh, for you because of the, the your uh, situation with your calf. I would actually do heel raise uh, squats. So everywhere that there's squats in there, that way you can work on range of motion, right? So the limiting factor probably for your squat depth, I'm imagining is your ankle mobility and the lack of it in that yeah. one side. So you you were an example of somebody who, for this reason, I would allow to to put your heels elevated while while you squat. Yeah, and, right. and I would I would focus there and I and. and I would I would suggest even going more unilateral work and in, in split stance uh, for your legs, uh, mainly because of there's a, still a stability issue. If you say you keep coming up to a certain point and then inevitably yeah. hitting, you know that point where you feel like you're you're gonna get an injury again. There's something that's not being addressed, and and right. to go through that for for quite a long time, you're gonna still build a lot of strength and support, but you're gonna find that your hips and your ankle uh, are gonna be challenged more uh, stability wise, which is gonna be a good thing overall not only that there's there's not a lot of benefit for you to be pushing max lifts either right i mean right. I, I don't think i would ever allow you to do right at least right not right now where you're currently at what we're, our goals are you know less than four to five reps on anything so you should okay. be at most working at 80 percent intensity so back off the weight i mean the the things that you're going to have to do as a firefighter it aren't, aren't going to be you know a max loaded back squat you're going to have to do things that require a little bit of of grit stamina endurance and right. some strength and so your training should model that so i i wouldn't be constantly trying to push the weight trying to see how much more you can lift especially if your body keeps telling you otherwise you keep getting hurt yeah i would look at these the following symptoms uh look for issues with inflammation so inflammation creeping up in your joints look at your hair are you noticing that your hair is either getting you know dry or more straw like or if it falls out notice your skin is it dry are you noticing you know patches of dryness or oiliness in your skin of course sleep issues libido is your libido erratic in other words is it either sometimes really high or non-existent um and then look at hot and cold tolerance do you find yourself in a room with other people and being like is it really hot in here is it just me or is it really cold or is it just me these are all signs that you're you're just pushing your body too hard too long too often. Now, there's nothing wrong with the mental toughness that comes from that. You're going to need that, 
But to me, it what's what you're from what you said. What screams to me is you're overdoing it, everything. You're just pushing your body too much, not getting enough sleep, and your body is just you're spinning your tires uh, in the dirt. So back off on some stuff. Mm-hmm. Allow your body to adapt because it sounds like your body right now is primarily focused with healing. It's trying to just keep up and heal, mm-hmm. but not really given a chance to adapt and. I bet I'm probably not the first person to tell you that you overdo all this stuff, and it's probably something that's been a part of your personality for a long time. Am I guessing correctly? You you are. I think the the biggest thing that that is hard for me is feeling this pressure to achieve these physical goals, and just always feeling like like I I don't do enough. Especially like the comparison trap is a bad one, but it's really hard when I look at other girls and they seem to be training more than me and being very successful. Whatever. Who cares? So don't worry about them yeah. because not, not to mention Instagram is a terrible place to, to judge. That yeah, by. And, yeah. And you yeah. got to do you look, what's your goal is your goal to look at other people and copy them or is your goal to be the best version of yourself? Maximize yourself. Yeah. So here's a deal you've got, you sound like, uh, and based on what you do, I would assume you have incredible mental fortitude. I'm going to want you to direct that towards what I'm talking about because here's your challenge. Your challenge is going to be to do less, not more. And that's going to be hard for you. So meet it like a challenge. So when that voice creeps up in your head that says, you're not doing enough, you're not good enough, you should be doing more, remember that you're mentally tough and that you're not going to allow yourself to sabotage yourself like you've probably been doing for a long time by overdoing everything. So try that. Give it a shot and give it for at least four weeks, but I say give it even at least eight weeks. And if you start to see your performance improve, I'm right. Then that means I'm right and stay the course. Don't do this. When the performance goes up, don't then say to yourself, oh, cool, I'm in the clear. Now I can start hammering myself again. Don't do that. Do what works. Don't do what your your insecurities tell you to do. Does that make sense? Trust the process. Yeah. So so keep the calories right where they're at. Adjust, make those adjustments to the macros, and then just cut back. You might even Shrimp be able to. You might down. even be able to cut back a little bit on the calories if, depending on how much uh, volume we reduce in your training. So I, I'm not sure what the two day a week routine, how much that's going to be uh, a reduction in what you are currently doing. You may be able to scale back to 25 to 2,700 calories. You know, I wouldn't even do that yet because uh, if you're in that state of HPA axis dysfunction, you're going to want to feed your body. Uh, I wouldn't reduce calories unless you absolutely need to. 27% body fat's fine. You're you're not in a bad place body fat percentage wise. You can perform phenomenally at that body fat percentage. So I would just keep your calories right around where they're at for now. We can always readjust later on. Drop the protein, increase the complex carbohydrates from easily digestible sources, and then back off on the intensity and the volume of your workouts and let your body adapt, allow it, get out of the way and let your body do what it wants to do. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, do you have MAPS Anabolic, Christine? Uh, I, I do not. Okay. We're going to send that to you. So at least you'll have that to kind of follow a template. Well, thank you, guys. Um, I, I will do what you suggest, and I'll, I'll check back in with you and let you know how it goes. Yes, please Perfect. do check in back with us. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Some of the hardest people to work with. She holds are, the record for the question, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Most detail. Yeah, yeah. That was I mean, a, that yeah. Was, yeah. That we that didn't was. have to ask questions that way, though. Yeah. Right? yeah. But I, I, how hard is it to train people like this? It's like harder to train someone like this than it is to train someone course, who you course, have to get, you know, motivate because – it's like they just they're want taking it. it all on. You know? Yeah. That's just the mentality. I yeah, mean, it's the a tough one. The positive of her going on and on and on about everything was it was a dead giveaway that that's how she, the way she does everything yeah. is all out. Okay. Yep. This and then this and this. And yeah. This, even this, the way she asked yeah. her question was all out. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. all, all out on the protein, all out on the workouts, all out on my mobility, all out on the yeah. testing. Like everything is all out. It's like, like it's okay. You can rest. Yeah. yeah. It, it is it's pretty good amazing. for your body. It is amazing though. I've had clients like this. And when I finally convince them to do what I say and just to trust me, it's like they're blown. Yeah. They can, oh my God, I had no idea. It's like, I know. I think it, it takes I, a lot of conversations. I think just reducing her protein and potentially calories is going to make a difference. Three, your body, think about doing all that work, lacking in sleep, and then also trying to digest and process all that. Me- 260 protein. grams yeah, of protein. Yeah, that's a lot of protein. Yeah, that's a lot. 
I mean, and and for a, a she's not a big girl, you know what I'm saying? So she's that much that much protein and calories to be digesting while you're lacking in sleep and pushing the body all day long. Her body's just on overtime. It's like, dude, mm-hmm. let it rest. Yeah, a there's bit. A, her body's literally taking more than half of that protein, turning it into glycogen, which is a lo- much longer process than just eating carbohydrates. It's a total waste. Yeah.